what this draped device was here. Uh, this is the Xbox. And so, uh, for the first time, let me now unveil Xbox. The original Xbox just turned 16 years old, and it's fair to say it's one of my favourite, if not my all-time favourite, console ever. There was something special when the machine was released in 2001, and it truly felt like it was the last console you'd ever want to play. Microsoft really hit it out of the park. It had it all. 64 megabytes of RAM, built-in hard drive, broadband network port, DVD movie support, and of course, the Duke. What a controller this was. Often criticized for being oversized, but to me, it was awesome. The later released S controller became the prototype for the Xbox 360 controller that preceded it. The system was modded pretty easily thanks to the ability to flash a modified BIOS to the TSOP package. Microsoft clearly did not anticipate the system being busted wide open so quickly. Because it was x86 based and utilized DirectX, what this did was open the door for homebrew, emulation and media players that could be developed on the PC but easily ported to the Xbox. If you've ever owned a modded Xbox, the chances are you've played my homebrew and emulators. So I ended up finding a local seller that was selling an Xbox for about $50. So I decided to pick up the machine and see if we can soft mod it as well as fit a compact flash device in place of the eight gigabyte hard drive that comes stock with an Xbox. So let's see if we can make that work. So this is the Xbox that I picked up. It's in pretty good shape. There's a few minor scratches, but overall it's well looked after. Now I'm going to walk through how to soft mod an Xbox. There are a ton of tutorials and videos out there, but it's also a little confusing if you're not sure what to do. So I'm going to keep it real simple. You'll need an Xbox of course, a copy of Splinter Cell, and it has to be an original version, not a greatest hits version or anything else. Also, you'll need a USB to controller port cable adapter, these cost a few bucks on eBay. And finally, you'll need a USB flash drive. 512 megabytes or higher is recommended. Now on your PC, plug in your USB thumb drive and download the softmod install files and Explorer 360. I'll leave a link in the description below for a location of both of these. Next, what you wanna do is extract the softmod install files onto your hard drive. Next, load up Explorer 360 and select Partition 0. Now you can drag the contents of the softmod installed files that you previously extracted into Partition 0. Go ahead and unplug your thumb drive from your PC and then connect up your USB to controller port cable to your Xbox and then plug the thumb drive into that. Now on the Xbox dashboard, go to the memory submenu and then select controller 2. Now you'll see two save files. Go ahead and copy both of those save files to the internal Xbox hard drive. Now it's time to load Splinter Cell. You'll see a profile called Linux. Select that and then select checkpoints and that will trigger the exploit and boot up to a custom dashboard. Now from here, we're ready to install the soft mod. What we need to do is first back up our EEPROM. This will copy it to the hard disk in case we need to recover it later. Next, install the soft mod. Just follow the on-screen prompts and you will have a modded system. On your next reboot, you'll have a fully modded Xbox to play backups, emulators, and media players. Now we have a soft modded system, and we could stop right here, but remember, I want to install a compact flash card into this machine, and we can't do that with a soft mod. Let me explain. So before we continue, I think it's important we talk about locking of hard drives. Each Xbox system has a hard drive, which is an eight gigabyte hard drive, and that's locked to the console 
with a serial number and the serial number is stored in the Xbox's EEPROM as well as on the hard drive and essentially what that means is if you try to take a particular hard drive and install it into another Xbox it's not going to work because the serial number on the hard drive does not match the EEPROM serial number in the second Xbox that you tried to install the hard drive to. So what you need to do once you've modded your Xbox is to unlock the drive. Unlocking the drive essentially means you can take it and install it onto another Xbox that has been modded previously. But it doesn't mean you can install it onto an Xbox that is a stock standard Xbox. Now, what does this have to do with compact flash cards? Well, it's quite simple. We can't install a compact flash device on a soft modded Xbox. What we need to do is enable the flashing capability on the motherboard, flash a new custom BIOS, and then install the compact flash device. So let's take a look at that now. So opening up an Xbox is pretty simple. First, turn the Xbox over. There are six screws that need a Torx 10 screwdriver to remove. Go ahead and remove each of them. Two of the screws are underneath warranty stickers and the other four are concealed under the rubber feet. Once that's done, flip the system upright and remove the top shell. It should just lift away. This is the inside of the Xbox and we've got the eight gigabyte hard drive, which is what we're gonna be replacing with a compact flash device. And this is the DVD drive. We're going to keep that in the system. In fact, there's nothing, um, the system won't work without a DVD in the system. And of course, you know, we wanna keep it anyway because I have a back catalog of games that I wanna play. The hard drive cradle is held by a single torque screw that can be easily removed. Once that's done, remove the IDE cable and the Molex power connector and then remove the cradle away from the motherboard. The DVD drive has two torque screws on either side at the front of the cradle, so go ahead and remove those as well. Next, remove the yellow power cable and the IDE cable from the DVD drive and then the cradle will simply just lift away. Now before we can remove the motherboard from the case, we need to disconnect all the connectors from the motherboard. So remove the GPU fan and the case fan as well as the main power connector. There's also two connectors that connect up to the controller remote board. Don't forget those as well. Now with the Torx screwdriver, go ahead and remove all the screws connecting the motherboard to the case. There should be 11 of them. So once all the screws have been removed, the motherboard should easily lift away from the case. If it doesn't, double check your work and ensure that all the screws have been removed before proceeding. So what we want to do next is flash a custom BIOS onto the TSOP and the reason why we have to open up the case to do that is because the TSOP by default is read only. Now by bridging two solder points on the motherboard we can make the TSOP read writable which means we can then flash a custom BIOS onto the motherboard. So in order to flash the TSOP what we need to do is bridge a solder point on the top side of the motherboard and then flip it over and bridge another solder point on the bottom. Now I will say that there are different versions of the Xbox motherboard. There is everything from version 1 to 1.6. Version 1 and version 1.1 has a certain way of enabling the TSOP flash. Version 1.2 to 1.5 have another method and with version 1.6 I don't believe you can actually flush a TSOP because I believe the LPC header has been removed so I think your only recourse if you have a 1.6 is either soft modding or a mod chip. So soldering those two points takes a little practice but it's pretty simple to do. It took me all of about two minutes. Then I checked my work and everything looked good. So now we can perform the BIOS flash. Because we still have a soft mod, I burnt a utility called Hexen to a DVD and booted it on the Xbox. Once it loaded, I then selected TSOP flash from the menu and flashed a custom BIOS. This process takes about a minute or two. The next time you boot up, you will see a custom boot screen. Now we can finally install our compact flash card. For my Xbox, I'm going to use a 32GB compact flash card. It's not the largest 
but the bigger compact flash cards can get quite expensive. However, I think a compact flash to SD card adapter would work quite well if you did want something larger. Now that we have our modded Xbox with compact flash, let's go back to what makes this machine so awesome. First of all, the homebrew support is excellent. This tool called DVD to Xbox will allow you to copy your discs to the hard drive. I have a nice collection of original games and of course, nothing beats original games, but the less wear on my DVD drive and discs, the better. So I just prefer to install these games on my compact flash card and play them that way. Incidentally, Microsoft officially added the same functionality on the Xbox 360 many years later. Even though there is support for HD displays, I've always preferred to play original Xbox on a CRT display. The Xbox has some fantastic games. Outrun 2006 is one of my favorites, but it's getting harder to find these days, so if you do see it in the wild, I wouldn't hesitate to pick it up. Another benefit of a modded BIOS is the ability to play games from other regions. This is the Japanese version of Jet Set Radio Future by Sega, which is easily one of the best games for the system in my opinion. And any region games can be installed to the Xbox hard drive using DVD to Xbox. And how can I not talk about Time Splitters 2, which is a fantastic first person shooter by Free Radical. If this game reminds you of Goldeneye on the N64, you'd be correct. Free Radical is made up of essentially the same development staff that developed Goldeneye and Perfect Dark for the Nintendo 64. Speaking of Nintendo, the emulators on the Xbox are excellent and still hold up very well today. Let's take a quick look at some of my software ports. This is my Super Nintendo emulator called X-SNES-90X, which is based off SNES-90X. I'm only just revisiting this emulator after about 7 years and it still feels and runs great today. It even supports light guns for Super Scope games and Justify games like Lethal Enforcers. Did you ever think it would be possible to play Killer Instinct on an original Xbox? Well here it is. A Raspberry Pi or Pandora's box has no chance of running this thing anywhere close to full speed. There are many emulators that can boot from original discs. This Sega CD emulator called Xenesis can boot from originals with full CD audio music. This Nintendo 64 emulator called Surreal 64 was a very ambitious project where I combined three open source emulators into one to increase compatibility. I went back and played it and I noticed there were certainly issues with some of the games and some graphical glitches. But there is a team that has been maintaining and updating it that I'll definitely need to check out. As it stands it runs many classic Nintendo 64 games very well. I was very proud of this emulator and I consider it one of the best things I ever coded and worked on. And my port of a Neo Geo CD emulator called Neo CD SDL can also boot from originals. What's cool about the Xbox is that it's truly the only system you ever needed for all your gaming and emulation needs. I also find it interesting that there are active Kickstarter campaigns for CD clone based systems when the Xbox has been doing this since about 2002. 
Now, before I go, I did want to mention a couple of things. Now, obviously in this day and age, we all know about Raspberry Pis and how great they are for emulation devices. But one thing I will say is don't discount a $50 Xbox. It has everything that you need literally out of the box to get an emulation station as well as playing amazing, amazing Xbox original games in one system. You can plug it into a high definition television via component cables or you can keep it retro and use a CRT and plug it in via S-Video, SCART RGB or composite video and all that stuff is available to you out of the box for you know fifty dollars for a used system it's pretty much a no-brainer and with the Nintendo 64 PlayStation and arcade emulation that's out there it's really a great device and to top it off you've got a huge library of a really really good Xbox original games to pick from as well. Now I did showcase some of them on this particular video but there are so many awesome Xbox original games out there for you to play. Before you think about picking up a Raspberry Pi and a power supply and a controller and a SD card and all the little bits and pieces you need to get a emulation station running on a Raspberry Pi Maybe you want to think about picking up an Xbox because they do a really great job for about the same amount of money and I would argue less money than a Raspberry Pi as well as having the ability to play those classic Xbox games. Well that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. As always don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.